More and more people from around the globe are choosing to learn Korean, but is it worth it? Let's talk about it. Men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. Uh, we're talking about this new Duolingo analytics study that was just released. Korean is now the sixth most popular Ooh. studied on Duolingo. We're going to be going over the report, um, some indication of global trends. What does it mean? What does it not mean? Why do people like studying the Korean language so much? Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. But you know what? Something else people need to study? How to say smala. No, I'm just kidding. Check out smalasauce.com. It is our chili oil. Um, all, David, all I got to say to this study is... Kimchi Nara! You watched that series. I watched that whole documentary about the nation of kimchi, man. Um, and it's funny to say that phrase. So I guess, David, why? how popular is Korean on a global level right now of, of people learning it? Well, it has switched places with Italian to take the number six spot. It has ranked seventh since 2020. Wow. That means it's moving up the list. Andrew, could it keep moving up the list from sixth to fifth to fourth to third? The second? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know if it'd ever be second, but I definitely think it has spots to climb, man. I think Korean still has a ways to go as far as popularity. Andrew, it is uh, rise, rose in amongst young learners ages 13 to 22 in several countries, including the U.S., mm. United Kingdom, and there is a 75% popularity growth to learn the Korean language in India. Wow. And a lot of it uh, is attributed to culture, music, entertainment as the driving factors it, it, to increase the number of people who want to learn Korean, citing Squid Game as an example. Um, the other popular languages are Japanese at number five, Hindi at number eight, Chinese at number nine uh chinese rose from number six in 2021 wow. david um what are your initial reasons why there's a whole comment section we're going to get into but what you have some reasons i have some reasons i think that the korean language is really fun to sound uh to speak mm. there's something from your diaphragm you know what i mean mm. like i i know some phrases i don't use them when i'm out in k-town because i don't want to have the whole thing where i'm like and then they're like, start speaking to me in Korean. I'm just like, that's all I know how to say. Right, I don't right, want right. to do that. But uh, it's cool. It sounds good. And I think that a lot of people are attracted to it on a linguistic level, right? Okay. But let's be honest, Andrew. Linguistics is always tied with the love of culture, pop culture, sociality, mm. the way interpersonal relationship pings takes place within that group. People like the Korean culture overall, which is leading to the linguistic study. But not just the culture, David. I feel like a lot of people are finding a liking to Korean people and the yeah. way they act. Whether it's like Ajumas or Ajishis, you know, like the older people, they are going to react positively to when you speak Korean, I would say. Right. Even yeah. if you're not, I mean, especially if you're not Asian, but even if you're Asian, like a Chinese person speaking Korean, I think they're going to enjoy it. Right. And the, the interaction will be more positive. So think about it. If it's easy to pronounce and easy to say, and all you have to do is say it to make this interaction a little bit better, what is your incentive? You're going to say it. Right. Yo, no, absolutely. I agree. I think that right now, long story short, there's like a 10-point checklist of sort of like soft power. Okay. And I feel like Koreans are hitting banging 10 out of 10 on them right now. Whoa. In the sense of like, it's like the West enough because of, you know, Westernization and uh, Korea is specifically uh, a Christian nation now uh -huh. along with Buddhist. Yeah. And um, I think that they have collectivism, but it's not a sort of drab gray collectivism. It's like a fun collectivism. It's like a cool frat or sorority that you want in on. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's other types of collect collectivism that may be like less appealing. Yeah, if you see, it, it, yeah. If you see a group of people and they look like cool and fun and clean and, and having fun with each other, wouldn't you want to join that group? Yes, or, or, right. or be able to ping with them on a deeper level, right? right. I think that uh, a lot of Koreans that I meet, and maybe it's, uh, I, but I've been to Korea as well. I know Korean Americans. I know people who came over at 10, 15 years old. You know, we went to college, so I just met, met a lot of people with a lot of different life patterns. A lot of Koreans feel like enthusiastic, positive mini ambassadors of their own culture. Obvious to various levels, but they feel like they have a zeal for it. They want to share it. Yeah. And uh, they're good at teaching it. Yo, you want to know crazy? I would say per capita, they are much better ambassadors and representatives than almost any other Asian yeah, of their motherland. I agree, I agree. Like, they just do a good job of representing themselves. And, and I feel like they're extroverted, too. Like, not overly extroverted, but, like, extroverted relative to being Asian. Yeah. And I feel like Japanese, they have a culture that a lot of people like, too, but they feel, like, difficult to talk to. They feel a little closed off, a little bit more internal. But I feel like they have attractive things. So they have some of yeah. the check marks, but not all the you, check you marks. You know what? Like when you talk to a Korean, like it feels like the door is still open. 
But sometimes for Japanese, it feels like, oh, you're not Japanese. Like, uh, it's okay. Like, we're going to be nice and serve you, but not Japanese. I'm not going to lie. China right now, out of the 10 check marks, might have like four of them. You know what I mean? They're, I don't even want to get into it. They're missing a lot of check marks Yo. right now. Not that I'm not saying that they care because they might be like, yeah, who oh, you are so foolish to think that we spend our time thinking about yeah. accumulating the check marks, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they just don't got them. Yeah. I think Thailand actually has six out of the 10 check marks in the sense that people believe that Thai culture, also very cool, a lot of bowing. They want to say the phrases. However, Andrew, Thai culture may be viewed as a little too gritty, still not economically there to be fully polished and refined. Right, 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 right. So oh, the overall, I agree with your points. And what I would say, I'd put it this way, like easily someone who's non-Korean or non-Asian can say, hey, all the Korean people I've met are nice. All the Korean content that I've seen is high quality. Mm. All the Korean food that is available to me is well done and tasty. And that is because they take so much pride in representing themselves that it makes it look like a tribe that you want to be a part of, all right? Also, it doesn't hurt that Korean is an easier language to learn because I think yeah. what happened with Chinese, and this is, you know, remember, we remember 12 years ago, 15 years ago, everybody's like, learn Chinese, learn Chinese. Oh my gosh, Chinese is coming. You got to learn Chinese. Hey, you want to do business? It, 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 you want to like, be a millionaire? Right. Learn Chinese, it, learn like Mandarin. The, it's like the turning Japanese of the 2000s. Right. Remember when everybody was learning Japanese but, in the 90s? Here's the thing that kind of happened is that economically China had a lot of power. So there was very a lot of reasons to learn Mandarin. And a lot of people still are learning Mandarin. But the soft power didn't come with it. Mm. So it didn't make people love to learn it. It's not a one-two punch. It's just a one punch. I know a lot of non-Asians that can speak Chinese, surprisingly. But they don't do it because it's just fun per se. Maybe they find it fun now. I'm sure they have fun when they speak it now. But right. like, it's not the most commercially viable, accessible language to learn. I think some people who started learning Chinese a few years ago or like got to like maybe year two and was like, ah. And then they see Korean and they're just like, I, you know what? I'm not using this language to be a millionaire. I just want it to live and make my life more fun. So I'm just going to learn Korean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like people learn Chinese because they're like, man, people are just shocked that I would. Whereas people are learning Korean because they're like, I kind of would like to be Korean or, so, or something, half, like, or something yes, like that. Yes. Yeah. Or love to hang out with Koreans. Yeah. Somehow. I do think that there's something in their culture that has a certain zeal and a passion for life. And obviously the, you know, it comes from a lot of pain too, but I do feel like Korean people live life with a zeal that is uh, not jaded. Yeah. They do not live life. Yeah, jaded. I mean, we're like, like, we're like in the middle of like, like peak. I don't know if it's Korean society, yeah. but like, this is like when Korea is at the top of the game globally yeah, and right I actually, now. I actually have like a it. lot of theories about like, cause they're, some of their culture is more from, uh, you know, Siberia is a little bit nomadic Mongolian influence, but mm. that's actually more like roughing it, which has, gives them the capacity to absorb Western culture at a more deeper level. I don't know. This stuff is going to go over your guys' heads. It but is there, not as dynastic as Mandarin. Yes, like yes, yes, yes. Chinese Less, cultures. uh, it just more got the things that's going to blend better with the West. I I mean, you know, there's always things that make certain cultures at uh, more attractive than others. And people are really into the Italian archetypes or Italian American archetypes. Like, yeah, she like, you know, what I mean, like, hey, what are you talking about? Like, how come everybody likes that character, whether or not that is them? You know what I'm saying? Like, I never seen anybody want to imitate like a Polish American or a German American as right, much as an right. Italian American. I don't know what a Belgian American or even a French American. Yeah, people look like. up to German engineering, but you never had people go with being like, yeah, I would like to talk like this. Like, this is not something that's like a highly desirable European like right, archetype. Right. Um, I think McGregor, he channeled something about Irish bravado that people were, very, you know what I mean? There's just like, basically what I'm saying is it's just different per culture and it just plays out differently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, guys, let's get into the comments. Andrew, these are some of the trends from the Duolingo study. English still top of the charts. Surprising, yes or no? No, I think English is going to continue to dominate the world. I think more and more people are learning English. Listen, between winning all the wars, the economics, Hollywood, and music of the past hundred some years, I think English is going to be at the top. Do you, and don't, I think, you don't see English being supplanted? I do not see it being supplanted by anything. Not Spanish, not Mandarin, no. English... It is still the one. The largest percentage of English learners came from India, Vietnam, and China. Mm. Yeah, all emerging, you know, economies. Right, they want more opportunities with the West, and most everybody in the West is going to know some level of English. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, we already covered this. Korea overtook Italian. Interestingly enough, Andrew, less people in the world are speaking Italian. The Italian government recently issued something that's not going to allow the young Italian millennials and Gen Z people to use any sort of English loan words in government. 
government or official business documents okay. because people were using too much. That's I mean that that is those are the weird things that you kind of have to do to keep culture sometimes because if you leave it up to pure capitalism in the free market, it is true more people the young audience they want to learn yeah. Italian yeah. pop culture is not popping right now. Right, Italian opera music, Pavarotti, Italian right? Italian ancient culture, Italian classical culture. The Romans. Is the best, like French and Italian classical culture. Better than Anglo classical yeah. culture, but, however. But modern culture, America. They were like, we were getting worried. Like, none of the youth, that they don't want, they want to, want to speak Italiano. America and British. America and British culture. Um, somebody said that Portuguese supplanted Russian. So people were talking about global trends. A lot more people are going to Lisbon. You know, Portugal, Andrew, an old world ancient empire, sort of fell off the map for a while. They always had Brazil, right? Because they speak Portuguese in Brazil. But now they were saying, obviously, Russia, there's a whole thing, the war, you know, it's just, it's dropping Portuguese surging. Well, it doesn't make you believe that you're going to need to know Russian. And so, like I said, listen, when people are using Duolingo, they're like literally going to take like a trip there or go there for study abroad. Right. So they're just thinking about where do I want to study abroad? I should brush up on that language. I want to go to Lisbon right. because it's got this charm to it. I want to go to Korea because it's got this. I, I consume all this Korean culture and eat Korean food. You know what I mean? So it's easy to just whip up Duolingo and be like, what are some phrases? Boom. Right, right, right. Like, what languages are fascinating me right now? Also, I think Russia, in a way, like, it could be passport bros. Russia is a popular destination. Brazil is a popular destination. However, Russia seems like not a good play for an American to go to in 2023. Let's seems be honest. Seems less appealing to go um, to. A yeah. lot of people are learning Ukrainian because they want to connect with the people over there. Obviously, you know, terrible situation going on. Also, possibly to communicate with uh, people who may be coming in to their country from Ukraine. Right, right, right. Um, Japan, it used to be the most serious learner of, ulti of um, a second language in the world, Andrew, but it's dropped number two to Belarus. But the other countries are Hungary, Russia, and Ukraine in terms of people who are like, they're saying that these people are putting in heavy average time, like not oh. just picking it up. I think, to be honest, a lot of those people want out. They want out of those countries right now, to be honest, mm. if you look at the situations. Um, somebody said Gen Z. Well, there's a Wait, is it, are these people learning English? No, just any language they're learning at hardcore. Oh, like they're just serious learners. They're these, putting the work in. Oh, okay. Gen Z uh, picks up a lot more less commonly studied languages as well as really being the heavy bulk distribution of learners of Asian languages, but they're also a lot more likely to give up than baby boomers. <laughs> yeah, Shocking. I, I think a lot of Gen Z people are toying with learning different languages and phrases at least, whether it's Korean, Chinese, Japanese. I think that Gen Z loves learning phrases from multiple languages, but in terms of actually hardcore communicating, it takes a lot of time yeah. and effort. Yeah. And Andrew, the truth is a lot of like the global class in any global country, they speak English. Right, right, right. To be right. honest. Um, Germany has the most polyglots now. It has pulled uh, ahead of the UK in terms of people who learn a lot of languages really well. You know, like- Well, Germany is in that area where it's like, it's a different language if they learn, it counts if they learn Danish and Flemish and then they learn like French. And it's like, although the, all those languages are like, somewhat related. Right, right, right. I, I saw the charts, Andrew. There's really interesting stats. A lot of people in Europe, they learn English. Obviously, they also learn Spanish. A lot of people in America learn Spanish. A lot of people in Canada learn French, mm. which uh, makes sense, right? Because those, th yeah. those are usually like the second biggest population. There's a lot of French in Canada. There's a lot of Spanish speakers in the US. Yeah. So Andrew, ultimately, this is the Duolingo study. Koreans rising. Some other countries are falling. Um, no, it makes what, sense. What, 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 what does it mean? It makes sense, man. I think that Right now, from a young pop cultural sense in the Asian sense, if you like Asian pop culture right now, you're probably referring to a lot of Korean culture. Possibly and, Japanese. And learning some Korean, there is no downside to it, to be honest. There's like no reason not to if that is your interest. Right. Learn a couple phrases. Yeah. Opa. I mean, Nuna, no, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Egg yo. Kyung, Dong Sang. I mean, whatever you want to. Uh, I can't think of it. so, you know? Yeah. I mean, we, we're just rattling them off, right? right, right These right. are things that we've picked up. But I think that, yeah, I think that, man, why not if that's what you're into? Yeah. Honestly, like, 
really, what's stopping you? Dude, it's always like culture is so interesting to me because there's so many levels of culture. It's not just like, you know, some people, they have their uh, industry popping, but not their soft power. Some people have their soft power popping Jamaica, but maybe the industry hard power is not there. And then right, some right, countries right, right. have both. Korea's got both right now. They, they're banging on all cylinders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think they have the capacity to be outward focused in a way that Japan never was. I think Japan at one point, 90s, 2000s, they got everything banging too, but just their mentality is more internalized. It's not externalized. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, guys, it, it, it also goes you... down to the individual people that you meet, you know? Like if on average, the average Korean that you meet is excited that you speak it and then, you know. They're gregarious. They want to share your culture. They want whatever. you to be excited about showing them what you know. It becomes fun. And anything that's fun, people will do. You know why? Because if it brings you dopamine, you're going to do it. Mm. What if it's copamine? K-dopamine. Korean dopamine. Oh. It brings you copamine. K-O-P-A-M-I-N-E. And people in 2023 are chasing dopamine like a coca fiend. Anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think of this Duolingo study in the comment section below. Very interesting. You know, these do these trends mean a lot or do people read too much into them? Let us know. We encourage the debate in the comment section below. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Until next time, we're going to hop out, boys. We out. Peace. Kimchi nara.